have no idea what's going on right now. The fucking police, they got a sniper over here on Be Quick on Airline, bitch. This nigga, uh, Lord, oh I don't cuss on my Facebook. I'm nervous. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. This man, look at this. Y'all have no, the police are everywhere. This man is shooting at the police. They probably finally just got him. He has a mask on, looking like a ninja, baby. Nice little sniper rifle. He is military. I don't know who this man is. He about to start popping again, baby. Y'all need to go around back. Y'all need to catch him back. Back. Go back. Oh my God, y'all, I've never, ever seen anything like this. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. Y'all see my hand shaking trying to record this. I'm ner nervous, baby. Look at all them people down there. This so serious, and I swear to God, this man come running over here, I will pee on myself. Y'all, he's still over there. He's still over there. Oh my God. Oh my God. There we go. Oh there we go. Oh God. They got him. They got him. Oh my God. No, they're not. Oh, go. 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 He's behind us. 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 not got him. The police still have not got him. This man has learned this area. I don't know who he is. They got police across the street. Baby, we about to go. The cops are moving further and further. They further and further. They don't know where this man is. We need to go. Oh it's time to go, baby. Yeah, they're coming in this lot. Come on. They really don't know where this man is. Oh 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 okay. I can't. Okay. Shot fired, officer down. Shot fired. Got a city officer down. Shot fired. Shot fired on the airline. Oh no. 
know where it's ever shooting from. Point around. Point around. Point around. Okay. So, I'm going to go. Court, 10 3 your traffic. 10 3 your traffic. Shots fired. Officer down behind the building. And hit her crown. I know where the subject's shooting from. I'm James Ballas. At least three police officers have been killed and several others have been injured in an apparent shooting attack near the Baton Rouge Police Department's headquarters in Louisiana. That, according to officials, one suspect has also been killed. The incident began at around 9 a.m. on Sunday when shots were fired in the area of Airline Highway and Old Hammond Highway, which is in the vicinity of the police department's headquarters. Witnesses reported hearing heavy exchanges of gunfire. A police spokesperson described the scene as active but contained, urging residents in the area to remain indoors. There was no immediate word on the motive for Sunday's shooting attack, though Baton Rouge has been the scene of protests following the fatal police shooting of Alton Sterling. The officers killed have been identified as two Baton Rouge Police Department officers and an East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office deputy. The names of the victims were not immediately released, and there was no word on the conditions of those injured. Louisiana Governor John Edwards said in a statement, quote, This is an unspeakable and unjustified attack on all of us at a time when we need unity and healing. Rest assured, every resource available to the state of Louisiana will be used to ensure the perpetrators are swiftly brought to justice, end quote. The shooting attack comes just over a week after a gunman opened fire during a Black Lives Matter protest in downtown Dallas, killing five police officers and injuring nearly a dozen more. The shooter was said to have been angered over the fatal police shootings of Alton Sterling in Baton Rouge and Philando Castile in Minnesota. City police helicopter in the air, um, circling around this area. There's state police, there's East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, along with multiple Baton Rouge police officers in this area. I talked to some people in this vicinity who said they heard what sounded like rapid machine gun fire um, shortly before 9 o'clock this morning. Um, and then, of course, that horrible news began coming out that multiple law enforcement officers were shot, um, at least three of them dead, according to our sources. Again, two of them were being told are Baton Rouge City police officers. One of them is a East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's deputy. We're here on Old Hammond Highway at St. Regis. This is, again, the closest vantage point that we can get to Airline Highway. It's completely blocked off. All the traffic, all of the uh, roads in this vicinity are blocked off. If you're familiar with this area, Baton Rouge Police City headquarters are at the Old Woman's Hospital right there at Airline and Goodwood. So we're about maybe a quarter of a mile to a half a mile away from that area right now. And it's unclear, again, where that shooting unfolded, but we're told it happened at a business between Baton Rouge City Police Headquarters and Old Hammond Highway on Airline Highway. And again, just to repeat, multiple officers, we're told, have been shot. At least three of them are dead. We're, our sources are telling us two are city police officers. One is an East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Deputy. This is a very active scene as they continue to work. Okay, we are working an officer-involved shooting that happened this morning. We do have some officers that are now deceased. They were transported to a local hospital where they have died. Uh, we do have one suspect who is down right now. We're checking that situation out. We do believe there are other guys that are involved in this shooting. So that's why we're asking the, asking the community to help us 
if they saw anything that looks suspicious, any vehicles that are out of place, uh, any guys that are running in your subdivision, uh, if they have anything suspicious in nature that they're wearing, if they're dressed in all black, if they have masks on, guns, please call local law enforcement. In this immediate area, there was a shooting. It's an ongoing scene right now. We're working the scene. A lot of guys are emotional. We have uh, officers that have passed, uh, guys that we are close to, uh, both sheriff and Baton Rouge City. So we're actively working this scene and we want to get that message out as quickly as possible. If anybody in this area saw anything suspicious, uh, please give law enforcement a call. Give uh, Baton Rouge Police Department, Sheriff or State, reach out to us. We're trying to get as much information as we can right now. Uh, we have guys all over the place and we're asking for your assistance. We need your assistance. Do we know how many officers were injured and how many were confirmed? fatalities? Well, we don't want to get into that right now. I know at least three or four, uh, but there are family members out there, so we want to protect the family members at this particular time. We want to make sure that they are aware of going on, what's going on. So we're contacting the family members so that they can come to the hospital. So we're going to protect that right now. We're going to respect them right now. We're going to respect the officers, uh, the ones that have died in the line of duty. So uh, we're going to protect all of that and then their family. Uh, it's just a tragic situation and we work it. Corporal McNeely, what can you tell us about what happened, what started this? Were they we don't have any information right now. We're still working the scene. So it's an ongoing scene. We don't have any specific detail as to what transpired. We do know there's a scene over here at the Be Quick uh, station, so we're working that scene. Uh, there's a, uh, a suspect that's down right now. We, we're checking him out. Uh, we're going to make sure there aren't any explosives around, so we're trying to secure the scene before we give any detailed information. What's your advice to people living in the area? Well, uh, just be on the lookout because we need their assistance. If they see anything suspicious, they see any cars that might be suspicious, don't belong, please give us a call so we can come check it out. We have all agencies out here, ATF, federal government, state, uh, Baton Rouge City, Sheriff Department, we have all our guys working, all law enforcement working. It's a tragic scene, it's an ongoing scene right now, so it's fluid. Uh, we're getting a lot of information in from our guys doing surveillance, so we're asking the community if they have seen anything, please give us a call. Is that one suspect down? At this Injured? particular time, no, no, down, 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 no, down, deceased, deceased, deceased. deceased. So How we many police confirmed that? I don't want to give specific numbers right now. Uh, we have three to four that were transported to the hospital, and uh, we believe that they are deceased. So we're respecting the family until all family have been notified before, before we give a specific number out. Do you know how many suspects you're looking for? We're not 100 percent sure. That's why we're putting it out. We, we do believe it's more than one suspect, though. That's why we're trying to get this me message out as quickly as possible, asking the community to help us. We do believe it's more than one suspect. That's why I'm here giving you this information right now. Any description on the suspects? Not at this particular time. That's why we're asking if you see anybody uh, suspicious in nature, if they're wearing uh, army fatigue, if they're wearing all black, if they, they're wearing a mask, if they're wearing anything that's out there, uh, please give us a call. I can't get into specifics right now. This particular suspect that's down, that's why we put an information out. If they're wearing all black, if they're wearing anything of army fatigue, uh, anything that's suspicious in nature, uh, if they're carrying long guns, rifles, handguns, uh, if you have uh, any cars in the area uh, that don't belong that's parked on the side of the road or the street, please give us a call because we're actively working this scene. We're following up on information that we, that we have. This information that I'm giving to you, we just got. That's why we we are rushing to get this information out as quickly as possible. Is there, is there, any, indication, is there any indication that this morning's incident had anything to we're do with We're not sure of anything right now. We're not sure of anything yeah. right now. It's a, we're not sure of anything right now. All we do know at this particular time is that there was a shooting. We believe it's multiple suspects. One suspect is deceased. Multiple officers were shot. We do have some that have been killed. That's what I know for sure right now. What's happening behind these cars? Anything still? We still have an active, uh, any shooters? We're, we're the securing the area with the, with the deceased suspect, the suspect that has been killed. We're making sure there aren't any explosives in the area. There's no other suspects. We, you mentioned we, we're not 100% sure of that. We do know and believe that there are more than one suspect, so that's why we're reaching out to the community. Where was the suspect killed? Was the explosives? We don't know. We don't know. So we're taking every precaution necessary to make sure that all our lives are safe. So we're going to check the scene thoroughly and make sure that we, we do what we can to make sure not only us, but the citizens of Baton Rouge are safe. Did our officers engage with the suspect? Did he officers did indication? engage. Officers did engage. There was no talking. It was shooting. So that's why we're working the scene. So he didn't give you any indication? We are working the scene. We're working the scene. Is this Where a citywide search? Is this just local? Uh, believe right now it's local because that's what 
before the, sh the shooting happened, but uh, we can't for sure say. So that's why we're putting the word out. Somebody might have saw something suspicious. They might know of something, may know of guys that were plotting to do this. So that's why we're reaching out to the community and asking for help. Repeat the location. Uh, I don't have the exact address. It's over here at the Be Quick on Airline Highway. It's outside. We're not 100 percent sure it's a combination of both. Our the shooting happened, believe, inside and outside the building. For sure outside. Is the suspect down outside? One suspect is down uh, in that area over there. Is the suspect shot by police? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, I, I believe so, but it's still an ongoing investigation. So I can't say we haven't reached uh, his location. We are where he's at, but we're sending our robot in to, to check to make sure he doesn't have any explosives on him. Oh, so he's not, he's not been taken away. He's still at the scene? Oh, robot? yeah. No, no. He's still there. So we're checking the scene with our robot to see if there are any explosives in the area and make sure there aren't any explosives on him. But he is dead. As the investigation continues, what are the biggest priorities? Well, it's safety for officers and safety for the community. After that, we're going to gather as much information as we can and work this case as best as we can so we can find all individuals that were involved in this. Any description of the suspect is deceased, black, white, male? We're not 100 percent sure. I don't want to give that information right now until we confirm. Are federal investigators involved at all? Yeah, it's, it's state, city, sheriff, uh, the federal government is here. Uh, ATF is here. All agencies are here working with us. What time did this happen, roughly? I don't have an exact time. It was this morning. I got a call around uh, 8.30, so uh, it was around that time. And where were the other, other multiple suspects last seen? Uh, I can't know. give you that information right now other than this immediate area, so that's where we're working now. How sickening is this to hear? Uh, very sick. We're not going to get into that right now, y'all. That's all I have. So if it's, we have any prior indications? We don't, going as in. soon as I get additional information on this, I will come back. Uh, I mean, we will come back. First of all, thank you all for being here. I'm Colonel Mike Edmondson, Superintendent of Louisiana State Police. Uh, um, first of all, let me tell you something. We're getting phone calls from around the nation, around the world. We want and need your prayers. Baton Rouge is in need of those prayers right now, so we thank you for those, and uh, we want you to know that we appreciate every single one of them going on at the time. Uh, we're not going to take questions into this because it is an active, it is an ongoing investigation that's got a lot of moving parts right now with multiple agencies. Louisiana State Police is the lead agency as, as, as with regard to the investigation itself. We'll be working very, very closely with East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office and, uh, and the Baton Rouge Police Department from a local perspective. And then we'll be joined from all our federal partners as we work the many, many leads uh, that's, that, that's taking place right now. We're going to give you a 1-800 number for the public uh, to have as we, as we move forward. Let me make something clear right now. You're getting a lot of information. You're, you're interviewing a lot of people. If it does not come from myself, the Chief of Police, Carl Dabity, or the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff, uh, Sid Gotro, if it does not come from these individuals, we cannot confirm it as being factual. So just know that up front. We're going to have another press conference tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. 1 p.m. tomorrow. We'll give you a complete update as we have it at that time. But we want to allow our detectives and all our investigators uh, the crime scene, it's a very large crime scene. Uh, we're going to tell people in the Baton Rouge area, if you do not need to be, absolutely need to be in that area of, of, uh, of Airline Highway and Old Hammond Highway, please stay out of that area because we're going to be working that throughout the evening, throughout the night as we work in that specifics. Please also know that there is not an active um, shooter scenario in Baton Rouge. No active scenario that involves a shooter in the city of Baton Rouge. We do believe, based on the information that we have, and again, this is ongoing, we believe that the person that shot and killed our officers, that he is the person that was shot and killed at the scene. So that's what we know right now. Uh, we do not believe, or do we have any other shooter held up in any other area in the Baton Rouge area, but understand, this investigation has got a lot of moving parts and pieces. Uh, we'll be moving and going on each one of those, but right now, there's no active uh, scenario shooting our uh, shooter scenario going on in Baton Rouge. I'll tell you this, I'm going to read it because I want to make sure you get the information so you'll have it as accurate. Today at approximately 8.40 a.m., several Louisiana law enforcement officers were shot near Airline Highway and Old Hammond Highway. A call came into Central Dispatch of the Baton Rouge City Police Department saying that there was a guy carrying a weapon, carrying a rifle, walking in that particular area at Airline and Goodwood. That was the information that came into us. Multiple, multiple officers were transported to local hospitals for treatment. I will tell you that three officers have died from injuries, two from the Baton Rouge Police Department and one from the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office. One East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Deputy 
is in critical condition, just got out of sur uh, surgery a short time ago. The sheriff and the chief are going to speak on those. Two additional officers suffered non-life-threatening uh, wounds. They are in stable condition at the hospital now. At approximately 8.40 a.m., Baton Rouge PD officers at the convenience store observed the individual. He was wearing all black, standing behind a beauty supply store, holding a rifle. At approximately 8.42 a.m., reports were received of shots fired. At approximately 8.44 a.m., reports were received of officers down on the scene. At 8.45, reports were received of more shots being fired. At 8.46 a.m., reports were received of the suspect, again, that was wearing all black, standing near a car wash located right next to the convenience store. At 8.48, our emergency uh, EMS uh, unit started arriving at the scene. They were staging so they could start uh, approaching and getting the bodies that were at the scene to render first aid. Officers engaged the subject at that particular time, and he ultimately mm -hmm. died at the scene. That was officers that were responding to the scene itself. State police and multiple agencies responded to the scene in an attempt to secure the area and identify possible potential suspects and further threats in the area. We in law enforcement ask that the public, look, stay, stay vigilant. We want you that if you see something that is suspicious and you know what's suspicious and out of the, out of the ordinary in your particular area, call your local police board. You know that number, call that particular number. If you need one from us and we ask that if you see suspicious activity uh, and, and you don't contact your local police foreman, call the following number. It is 1-800-CALL-FBI. 1-800-CALL-FBI. 1-800-225-5324. 1-800-225-5324. 1-800-CALL-FBI. Again. We do not have an active shooter scenario in, in the city of Baton Rouge. We are working the investigation. Uh, it's going to take us in mul multiple directions. A lot of leads out there we're following on. You can help us as a public. If you see something out of the ordinary, please call us. And again, we'll have a 1 p.m. press conference tomorrow afternoon, and we'll completely update you on anything that's going on with this. Good afternoon, everybody. As all of you know now, this morning, three law enforcement officers in Baton Rouge were killed in the line of duty. Three others were wounded. Uh, one is it still in critical condition. As of right now, we don't know the motive of the killer. We don't know whether the killer is set out to target police officers or whether he gunned them down as they responded to a call. Regardless of motive, the death of these three brave officers underscores the danger that police across the country confront every single day. And we as a nation have to be loud and clear that nothing justifies violence against law enforcement. Attacks on police are an attack on all of us and the rule of law that makes society possible. Now, earlier this afternoon, I spoke with Governor Edwards and Mayor Holden, and I offered them the full support of the federal government and reiterated my full support for law enforcement in Baton Rouge and for police officers across the country. I also spoke to the Attorney General. The FBI has already been on the scene, and through the work of all levels of government, justice will be done. Most of all, our hearts go out to the families who are grieving. Our prayers go out to the officer who's still fighting for his life. This has happened far too often. And I've spent a lot of time with law enforcement this past week. I'm surrounded by the best of the best every single day. And I know whenever this happens, wherever this happens, you feel it. Your families feel it. But what I want you to know today is the respect and the gratitude of the American people for everything that you do for us. And five days ago, I traveled to Dallas for the memorial service of the officers who were slain there. I said that that killer would not be the last person who tries to make us turn on each other, nor will today's killer. It remains up to us to make sure that they fail. That decision is all of ours. The decision to make sure that our best, best selves are reflected across America, not our worst, that's up to us. We have our divisions, and they are not new. 
around-the-clock news cycles and social media sometimes amplify these divisions. And I know we're about to enter a couple of weeks of conventions where our political rhetoric tends to be more overheated than usual. And that is why it is so important that everyone, regardless of race or political party or profession, regardless of what organizations you are a part of, everyone right now focus on words and actions that can unite this country rather than divide it further. We don't need inflammatory rhetoric. We don't need careless accusations thrown around to score political points or to advance an agenda. We need to temper our words and open our hearts, all of us. We need what we saw in Dallas this week as a community came together to restore order and deepen unity and understanding. We need the kind of efforts we saw this week in meetings between community leaders and police, some of which I participated in, where I saw people of goodwill pledge to work together to reduce violence throughout all of our communities. That's what's needed right now. And it is up to all of us to make sure we are part of the solution and not part of the problem. You know, someone one, once wrote, a bullet need happen only once, but for peace to work, we need to be reminded of its existence again and again and again. My fellow Americans, only we can prove through words and through deeds that we will not be divided and we're going to have to keep on doing it again and again and again. That's how this country gets united. That's how we bring people of goodwill together. Only we can prove that we have the grace and the character and the common humanity to end this kind of senseless violence, to reduce fear and mistrust within the American family, to set an example for our children. That's who we are, and that's who we always have the capacity to be. And that's the best way for us to honor the sacrifice of the brave police officers who were taken from us this morning. May God bless them and their families. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Good evening, Brett. Authorities have confirmed that the man who shot six police officers was 29-year-old Gavin Eugene Long, originally from Kansas City. At this point, his motivation is unknown. We don't know what brought him to Baton Rouge, but here is what we do know. Witnesses say around 8.20 this morning, they saw Long dressed in all black, carrying a rifle. A short time later, shots were fired in the exchange. Three officers were killed, two Baton Rouge City officers and one deputy with the Sheriff's Department. All all were in their 30s and their 40s. All were married with families. Three other officers were injured. One is still fighting for his life. Take a listen to the Baton Rouge Police Chief and the East Baton Rouge Sheriff, both of whom lost men today. We'll get through this as a family. We'll get through this as a community. But I want all of the BRPD officers to know that I support you. Every single one of them, I stand with you, I stand beside you, and we are going to get through this, and we're going to get through this together. This is not going to, this is not going to tarnish this city or this department. To me, this is not so much about gun control as it is about what's in men's hearts. And until we come together as a nation, as a people, to heal as a people. If we don't do that and this madness continues, we will surely perish as a people. Long was shot and killed with the exchange with members of law enforcement who responded to the shooting. We're told at this time there are no more active threats, but at a press conference a couple of hours ago, uh, authorities did not elaborate on whether there are any other suspects out there or not. At the same time, they've put out a number, 1-800-CALL-FBI, if anybody in this area sees anything suspicious in the coming days. And as they continue to try to find the answers uh, that we mentioned, Brett, there's also a call calls for unity uh, both here on the local level and on the national level. The mayor says that the hate has to stop. President Obama coming out and addressing the nation, saying that his thoughts and prayers are with the families that have been ripped apart.
you know, there's an emotional statement that I want to read uh, to our viewers uh, here in the United States, indeed around the world. The words of Montrell Jackson, uh, one of the police officers who was shot and killed today in Baton Rouge, only 32 years old. He wrote these words on Facebook on July 8th after the Alton Sterling shooting in Baton Rouge. And he writes this, I'm tired physically and emotionally, disappointed in some family, friends, and officers for some reckless comments. But hey, what's in your heart is in your heart. I still love you all because hate takes too much energy, but I definitely won't be looking at you the same. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to me or my wife. It was needed and much appreciated. I swear to God, I love this city, but I wonder if this city loves me. In uniform, I get nasty, hateful looks. And out of uniform, some consider me a threat. I experienced so much in my short life, and these last three days have tested me to the core. When people you know begin to question your integrity, you realize they don't really know you at all. Look at my actions. They speak loud and clear. Finally, I personally want to send prayers out to everyone directly affected by this tragedy. These are trying times. Please don't let hate infect your heart. This city must and will get better. I'm working in these streets, so any protesters, officers, friends, family, or whoever, if you see me and need a hug or want to say a prayer, I got What's you. Happening? They say in Baton Rouge, three police officers dead. Um, I think three more wounded. Some people is already calling it a false flag. I have no idea until I sit down and really look at it and investigate it. But if it's not a false flag, um, I have no idea why somebody would do something so senseless. Or should I not say senseless? Um, a lot of people are saying, which I've been on social media, they're saying that this is in retaliation of um, Alton Sturden being killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and I watch, what, the governor come on and say, well, we need to all come together. Um, this is, there's never a reason to gun down police officers or do anything senseless in nature like this. Um, we need to all pray. We need to come together as Americans and all of this good stuff. And I would just like to say to the governor and other police departments around the country that when the bad officers do something wrong, they need to be held accountable. Just as who, um, if this is not a false flag, the person who is doing, or the person or persons who is doing this shooting or the killing of the cops and wounding cops, that they should be held responsible. That way we as Americans can come together as one. We can hug, we can kumbaya, we can do all that good stuff. Now, do I think officers should be killed and wounded? No. Same way I don't think civilians should be killed and wounded. If they haven't done anything that says you should be killed or wounded, I'm just saying. When it's innocent folks, people shouldn't be harmed. Everyone has families, everybody have loved ones. But just wanna throw this out early. Then I'm gonna come back after I do all my reading and researching and stuff like that. But y'all, be careful out there. Be careful. I'm out. Detox diets have gotten a lot of attention in the last few years. It seems that everyone is touting the benefits of a detox. But here at Cosmo Global, we believe that the detoxification process is more than just a physical process. We believe that detoxification is a holistic process, mind, body, and spirit. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as group coaching. In our coaching, we include diet plans, workout regimens, books, emotional support, purpose finding, and spiritual advisory. If you are ready to take on your spiritual metamorphosis, then visit us at cosmoglobal.org to start today. Peace family. What it do? You know it's Cosmo right here, reporting live from Houston in my hotel. 
gave out probably probably around 700 bucks, something like that. But um, yeah, we in these streets, man. And I just want to let I just want to get this message to my people out there. With all the stuff that's going on right now, this is my message to you. Don't get emotional about it. What I mean is the emotions that, you know, come up when stuff happens. Don't start to then want to change stuff. Making emotional decisions. Because when you make emotional, when you make decisions that are based off emotion, when that emotion dies, then that fuel dies. That that energy for that decision. You get what I'm saying? So that's why you base your decisions off logic. So when the emotion dies, you still got your energy. You see, because your your decisions are, are based off logic. They're getting fueled by your logic, which is essentially inspiration. That's the difference between motivation and inspiration. See, that's why you want to be inspired. Because when those days when you're going to be feeling down, you're going to be feeling low, you're going to be feeling tired, that inspiration is going to be there. Motivation, it fluctuates. It come and it go. It's with emotion. That's why I said it's right next to emotion. But the inspiration is there forever. You got to find a reason to do the things that you want to do. I'm inspired to want to help my people. It's my purpose. You get what I'm saying? I love helping a little guy. I love being the buffer between the bully and the victim. You get what I'm saying? I love fighting those. I love fighting the righteous fight. So when you got reasons like that, it don't matter how, you know what I mean? If you're tired or if you, or whatever come up or whatever excuses we have. If we're sick, you still got to do it. You know what I mean? If you ain't got all the resources that you should have, you still got to do it. You got to go. All right. So that was my first principle. The second principle is be consistent because a lot of people right now, they're changing. They're, they're starting to change. They're like, okay, hey, we got to start doing shit. But what are you going to, what is most people going to be doing a month from now, three months from now, six months from now, five years from now? Are y'all still going to be motivated? You got to make a lifestyle change. This shit ain't just, oh, something happened, then I react. You get what I'm saying? That's the difference between react and respond. Your response able, able to respond correctly. That's what being responsible means. All right? So know the difference. You're responding with logic. So just be consistent. All right? And another thing, it's not really a principle, but it is in a way. So I, I just wanted to bring up when the Native Americans, when they were extincted by the same people that run this country, my question to you, just something for you to think about, at what point should they have stood up? That's something for y'all to think about. I've already meditated upon it. At what point should the Native Americans who are extinct at what point should they have stood up? That's every every individual has to think about that individually. You got to take that within and you consider that. So I'm out here in these streets. Your brother Cosmo, salute to you. You remember, you luck up, you get up, and you don't ever give up. Peace, family. What up with y'all? I'm in Dallas right now in the streets, you know, on my book tour, on another book tour giving the knowledge out to my people. And I, I I had already decided that I was coming to Dallas before the even, you know, police shooting already happened. So I was already decided. So I, I don't know, I guess it's just, you know, the spiritual was just telling me it was the right place to come before. But I before the police shooting occurred, I had already made the decision to be here. But um, yeah, right now I'm in these streets and I just want to speak on the events that's going on right now and just some of the principles that I've already spoken about. And I'm going to relate them to right now what's going on first i want to let you guys 
look, you got to really look at certain things because say, for instance, the holiday that just passed, Independence Day. Independence Day is really based on, say, George Washington and the Americans fighting against their oppressor, Britain. And we celebrate that. We tell them they're right. You get it? But when an African fights back, it's wrong. But every time a European fights back against his oppressor, he's right. But as soon as an African tries to fight back, why is that? So we got to start questioning our mindset. Are, are our thoughts our own thoughts? Because it doesn't even make sense, the shit we're thinking about. You feel me? You got to really question your thoughts because you're saying one person is right, but then you're saying another person is wrong for doing the same exact fucking thing. In fact, we celebrated and make holidays about it. It doesn't make sense. Question your thoughts. Question everything you are thinking. I'm telling you this because sometimes people out here are programmed and they don't even, they're not questioning anything. All right? That's why I tell you, be curious. Curiosity. Be, stay a child. You get what I'm saying? See, the children, they, I'm out in these streets, children is like, that, yeah, I agree with you because the children still got that curiosity. They didn't beat it out of them yet. You see, that I, that's why I love the kids. And that's why I'm still a motherfucking kid. I'm a dire kid. I'm not growing up. I'm keeping my own mind, my own logic right here. Mm -mm. You're not going to tell me that this water is wet and it's OK. And then when this water gets wet, then you say it's not OK. No, it is going to be wet across the board. And look, let's just go with the numbers. Let's go with the history. 100% of revolutions of victims fighting their oppressors from victims fighting their bullies, 100% have been successful through fighting back, through bloodshed, zero have been successful just over simply protesting. It doesn't, it has never worked and it never will. You've got to fight back. That's the only way a bully knows to quit. He doesn't know words. He can't understand words, I promise you. He doesn't understand protests. If y'all want to keep protesting, do that. But for the serious ones, the real ones, the alpha ones, we know what it's going to take. It's only fighting back or money. That's all they care about. Revenue and blood. Revenue and blood. Revenue and blood. Nothing else. Don't even think about it. All right. And another point I wanted to make. All right. That was the point. And it was what I already had spoke about before even this shit even kicked off. My last episode, standing up when you're right. The episode is kind of long, you know, but it's about a principle, standing up when you know you're right. You see, like, okay, the protest is in Baton Rouge yesterday. I see a woman, she's speaking articulately to the crowd, you know, to the, her fellow protesters. She's speaking to them, telling them, yo, what we need to do and they're wrong and this and that. But it's still repeating the same stuff that we already know. We know the system is wrong. We know they're oppressing us, yada, yada, yada. We know this, okay? When they see this, they arrest those people. Even though, even though she knows she has the right, and she's saying it. I have the right, we have the right, yada, yada, yada. What did I say in my last episode? You know your rights, but then you got to stand on your rights. It's two parts to freedom. Knowing your rights doesn't mean nothing, especially in this world, ran by devils. You're in a world that's ran by devils. Get this through your head right now. Devils run this. They don't understand your words. It doesn't, it doesn't click in them. It doesn't get through to them. Blood, revenue. That's the only thing that gets to. And this is, this is a history, 100%. I'm almost at a loss of words because I'm, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say to you. But her knowing the rights is not going to stop anything. You got to stand on your rights. You see, that's what separates me from the seven billion. And that's why I'm so powerful, because I stand on my rights. And if you go back to my episode, I give you an example of when I stood on my rights. 
if I'm peaceful protesting and they come up, that, that's why I don't go to protest because I know I speak well, I'm articulate, I can motivate, I can inspire. And those are the ones they arrest. So I know they would try to arrest me and I know I would die right there because you're not gonna kidnap me. I, I know my rights, but I stand on my rights. That's what separates me. That's why they're so afraid of me. They're like, no, we, because that's the key. If what I got in me, the courage, the tenacity, the bravery, if that spreads, then it's all over. Because that's, that's what the revolution is. Once it gets to the point where people stand on their rights, it's not knowing your rights. Knowing your rights is, the, is, is nothing to a bully. It's nothing to a demon. It's nothing to a devil. You got to stand on your rights, just like George Washington did, just like all the other white rebels that they say. You know what I mean? And we celebrate and salute. That's what Nat Turner did. That's what Malcolm did. You got to stand, man. You got to sacrifice. And men, this is all for you. I don't even want to see women at, at rallies and all that. Just, it's embarrassing. I feel embarrassed by seeing that. Let me tell you what the... And I want to leave you because I don't want to make this video extra long. But let me tell you our mindset in Africa. One of the elders was telling me our mindset before the Europeans even arrived, right? Before they was, you know, still in the mountains and stuff. Our mindset was this. When we would um, battle with outside, you know, entities that would come in, say the Asians or whatever, Middle Easters would come in. This was the mindset. When the men would go out to fight the enemy you wouldn't come the woman would tell her man you don't if you come back here defeated i'm killing you you get what i'm saying the man knew he couldn't go home either he killed his enemy or he died that's it because the kid sees that you see that if the kid sees that shit, well, damn, my daddy came home and he got his ass whooped. And he was just, he just a bitch. What you think the kid gonna grow up? I'd rather have this motherfucker die. At least now the kid knows, what, you know, to stand for something. You see, so this is a mental disease. This is what I'm talking about, the holistic aspect of the shit. Y'all taking on mental diseases. This shit is deeper than you can even imagine. Some shit that you didn't see, so you take it on. So you think it's wrong when you fight back, but you celebrate it when somebody else fights back. But hey, salute to the rebels, man. I'm out here. I'm in these streets. You look up, you get up, and don't ever give up. Oh, and this is very important. I wanted to let y'all know, because if anything happened with me, because I'm an alpha male, I stand up, I stand firm, and I stand for mine till the end, to the last day on this, in this flesh. But I'm not the flesh. I'm not the body. I have a body. But I just want to let y'all know, don't affiliate me with nothing. I'm not affiliated with the black business school, even though I might promote their business or something like that, or any of my friends, any of my associations. Those are just associations. I'm not affiliated with it. Yeah, I was also a Nation of Islam member. I'm not affiliated with it. Don't affiliate me with the money team. You, you, some happened, they be like, well, yeah, well, he's with Floyd Mayweather. No, don't affiliate me with nothing. Black business school, I was a Christian. Uh, I was in Africa. Don't try to say, oh, he was Africa. He was this and that, no. They try to put you with ISIS or some other terrorist group or anything. No, I'm affiliated with the spirit of justice. Nothing else. Nothing more, nothing less. All right? You see, Convos with Cosmo. That, that's me. I created that. That's what I'm affiliated with. Conversations with Cosmo. The shit that I built. Me and my own. And with the spirit of justice. That's it. So just make sure. Uh, no affiliations. No. I thought my own thoughts. I made my own decisions. I'm the one who got to listen to the judgment. That's it. And my heart is pure.